Now I can tell you this, that movie is great. It's, it's powerful. I'm gonna sit my mother down and have her watch it so she might finally get why I ride. That sure would be nice. Anyway, we move on. It's now time for the news. That part of the show where we bring you some of the happenings around the world of power sports. And there have been plenty since the last show. A lot of new models have been introed, especially at the big motorcycle expo in Milan, Italy. That's called EICMA. Now let's start with Harley Davidson. The Milwaukee-based motorcycle maker has introduced a couple new models based on their new liquid-cooled Revolution X engine, the Street 500 and the Street 750. They're part of Harley's dark custom lineup. Both of these new motorcycles have new, narrow, lean chassis, new suspension, new bars, and more. Check out more information at harleydavidson.com. There's more details there. Kawasaki sent out information on the 2014 Z1000 Street Fighter, designed to give you that, help, I'm stuck in the back of my seat, acceleration. It's got naked bike type of comfort, Sugomi type styling. It's supposed to look like a crouching predator, and I think it kind of looks like that. With more meat in the mid-range on the 1043cc dual overhead cam, 16 valve inline four, it should be a thrilling ride. Check out kawasaki.com for more information. Ducati showed the world the new Monster 1200 and 1200S with an 1198 Superbike Derive power plant anchoring these two models, which it massaged to deliver outstanding mid-range grunt, where you'll be using most of the power on this Italian Street Fighter. They come with all the stuff you'd expect. High-spec brakes, single-sided swing arm, etc. Eight levels of traction control, three ABS levels, and three level ride-by-wire modes. Now, the S model gets 145 horse with 92 foot-pounds of torque and weighs only 401 pounds drive. Ducati.com has more. On to Honda. Moving on the success of the CTX 700, Honda released info on the V4-powered CTX 1300 with a blend of sporty performance, spacious comfort, integrated hard bags, low seat height, low center of gravity, all kinds of technology built in. It looks set to create a visceral riding experience. And speaking of riding experience, Honda updated the great CBR1000RR sport bike. No, it doesn't have traction control just yet, but some engine internals like new cylinder head, intake track, and new exhaust system are on the motorcycle. They add some power and torque. The riding position has also changed. It's more aggressive via new bars and foot peg position. But the bigger news comes by way of the CBR1000RR SP. The SP is equipped with new Olin's fork and shock, Brembo front brakes, new subframe, single seat cowl, which lowers the center of gravity, plus hand match pistons and connecting rods. This will be the foundation of the World Superbike Evo Racer. No doubt about that. And speaking of racing, in the wake of the final round of the MotoGP World Championship, HRC introduced the RCV1000R. This is not a prototype motorcycle, but falls into the race replica thingy that MotoGP has going on, it looks pretty sweet. And as this show launches, 2006 MotoGP world champion Nikki Hayden from Owensboro, Kentucky is testing it. Hayden will move from the factory Ducati to the Aspar Honda team for 2014 and ride the 1000R. Retired world champ Casey Stoner tested this custom bike to just under three tenths of a second off the full-blown factory prototypes. Check out MotoGP.com for times on Nikki and his new Honda. And oh, by the way, Suzuki returns to MotoGP in 2015, Aprilia in 2016. And congratulations to newly crowned MotoGP world champion, Mark Marquez. He took his Repsol Honda to nine pole positions and won the BMW M6 Coupe in the process. Had six wins this year, including his first, the youngest rider to win a race in the premier class in Austin, Texas, in only his second MotoGP race. That displaced American Freddie Spencer as the youngest by the way. All of this in his rookie year. He became first rookie to win a MotoGP championship since American Kenny Roberts did it 35 years ago. And the youngest world champ ever, again, knocking Freddie Spencer out of that stat. Okay, that was a lot to talk about. Now it's time for some riding. A motorcycle, BMW's F800 GT. 